Finally, do not tell readers what to think. So you don't really come out and tell them what to think. But you're kind of summing up what you think, what you feel, what you experience, and then they can draw a conclusion themselves. That's what's interesting about narration. And so that's why I love this idea of maybe go check out some short stories. Because short stories, they're very short. They tell a lot of information, and they don't really have time to tell you you should do something or you should not do something, but rather you read the story and take it away from that person's experience and say, hmm, that's, that's good or that's something I should do or something I shouldn't do because you think of it that way in your brain. You don't get told what to do. Because of narration's emphasis on telling a story, you often use words like these, afterward, concurrently, eventually. You can see that these words are very time-oriented, aren't they? Because you're trying to set up a time. When did this happen? Then after this happened, something else happened. Immediately, in the meantime, in the past, and later. Again, these are all setting up that time frame. I like to call it a time frame. That is, what happened, and then what happened, and then what happened. So you get this kind of little windows into time. I think that's a great way to think about it. Now, of course, your narration does not have to follow a linear time structure like day one, day two, or first minute, second minute. But I think it usually does. And if you want to follow a different way, jumping back and forth, it's hard to do. It's not an easy thing to do. So make your writing a little bit easier and maybe think about following the time structure, a linear time structure. Meanwhile, soon after, then, while. These are all very useful words that are used when telling your story. Here are some example phrases such as, after something happened, minutes and hours later something happened. So you get this kind of first something and then second something. I like that. After I did something, then I did something else. Although I have, you see it's very personal, lots of this I. As I passed through, as I passed through the door, I noticed something, something, right? Okay, so at the end, despite during, these are all very similar phrases. And the reason I bring them up is because when you're writing a narration, one of the serious problems you have is you run out of phrases and words to use because you're saying, I walked through the door, and then I walked in the room, and then I walked to the back door. And it's like every sentence is becoming the same. This is hard for anybody to write. Native English speakers have this problem too. So it's not just because you're learning English that it's hard. It's hard for everyone. So it's important to have some sentence variety. Try not to use the same phrase or the same words in every sentence one after another. Try to change the phrases to be a little bit different. And this is some examples here. I actually happen to think, I have discovered that, I started something in the beginning, it was a something day when I did something, when I finished something. Another thing to remember is uh, pronouns. So pronouns like I, uh, she, he, and uh, that, it, you can actually use these kinds of words to represent people and things. Pronouns are easy to begin to repeat one after another. So let's say we have a person that we want to talk about and the person has a name. Maybe the name is uh, Smith. And uh, let's say Jane Smith. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and say Jane Smith. Now, as we begin to write about Jane, I saw Jane, I shook hands with Jane, Jane began to tell me the story, Jane was very upset. If I keep saying Jane all the time, it's going to become very boring. So maybe one sentence I can use the name Jane. In another sentence I could use the pronoun she. But then what do I do? I don't want to use she, 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 she all the time, do I? I want to be able to uh, use some variety. So then you can say things like Ms. Smith. That's possible. Or you could mix it up and say one sentence is Jane, then she, and then Ms. Smith. Or you could say the woman, right? I mean, I know that sounds a little bit crude, but you could do that, and that's not unusual. 
Or you could say, um, let me see, maybe she has a nickname, and you can begin to use her nickname, right? So another time you could just say Smith. You don't even need the title Ms. or Mrs. Smith. You could just say Smith. So right here we have a few examples. And so this means that every sentence you can try something different, and then sometimes you cycle back, and again we're back to Jane again. That's okay, right? If Jane was tall, and at the beginning we said, uh, I walked in the room and saw an exceptionally tall woman, you could actually, in your narration, say, the tall woman began to speak. And then later we found out her name's Jane, then we can change the saying Jane, right? And then later we could also again say the tall woman or the, the tallest in the room, and then in the next sentence say Jane again. So I think it's extremely uh, difficult, but many of my student writers have this problem of repeating she, 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 he, 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 he. Okay, so try to mix up the pronouns. And even if you're talking about me, I, you can try to mix it up a little bit somehow. So put variety in your sentences. For your practice, let's try writing a narration. Let's try 100 words of a narration. And here are some topics you can use. This is on page 94 of your ebook. So we have these different topics you can choose from. For example, a disastrous date. Maybe you've had an experience where you had a date and something went wrong. A frightening experience, something scared you before. A lesson you learned. A journey you took, maybe a trip somewhere. A moment of failure or success a place you would like to live. So any of these topics, just choose one of those topics and write 100 words in the body for your essay. And remember, keep it interesting, keep it personal, and try to make the reader interested in the detail. I want to see more, I want to learn more. This is interesting and fun. I I understand your perspective, I understand your experience. That's how a good narration works. Good luck.